listening to different chatters, it can accurately predict what's going to happen. It says, just for the record, right now that Fukushima was an extinction event, and by 2050 there will be no life on Earth from Fukushima. Now that's military, and that's heads up. So what I'm doing with John Wells um, on, on the 30th is I'm doing the USS America is taking on water, and it's time to man the lifeboats. And what we're going to do is set up little kibbutzim-like bunkers, which I do in agriculture, that are self-sustaining communities. And we have a series of them already in structured. have been working with Congressman uh, Dennis Kucinich, others, where I go in and network rural communities and bunkers um, in Ohio or in Tennessee. I just came back from Chattanooga. I was down in Mexico. We're setting up infrastructure for when and if the grid goes down, at least your water and food's together. If you don't have your water together, you will be a member of FEMA. And that's the way it's going to play. And it's like Hotel California. If you check in, it's not, it's not funny. Uh, that means today, not next week, you need to have a minimum of three days of water for everyone in your family, including pets, and have a game plan for the first day of how to replace it. And if you don't have that part, you're dead. And that's how it's going to play. Uh, well water, you need a hand pump. There are only 60 bucks. Matt Stein and I do urban survival skill workshops. Uh, we did a really big one for the military down in Reno. That's where Kerry Cassidy first met May, and we did that, what is it, the megas that came in from out of the cold. I am basically the bottom line in the physics end of things. And I don't know. And if I don't know what's going on, what does that suggest? Then you ask me. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. You knew that already. We had fun down in Reno. Uh, Lenny went with me on that one. Matt and I are going to be doing one in uh, Lebanon, Missouri at usapreparis.com. And so if you're interested, that's one in, in uh, if you can get back there, you're welcome. Anybody here is welcome to crash my survival things back in Lebanon. You're welcome to come as my guests. You'll have your own tournaments and you have where you're going to stay, how you're going to do that. But if you want to take any of my workshops with Matt, you're welcome. Uh, it's not about money. It's about getting the information out. Now, what we're doing is setting up lifeboats, self-sustaining communities uh, where very wealthy invest in some farmers, like community-supported agriculture, and they have a bolt hole if and when Bitcoin disappears, it doesn't work anymore. I'm going to give you some websites right now if you want more information. How about Oregon Organic Farms com. How about ebarterbank.net? These are all out of Williams. We have uh, greencarebotanicals.com. The Chinese want to export medical marijuana. How would we do that legally? The Yurok have a port of export. <laughs> Rancheria down in Crescent City. Got him into gambling, we might as well get him into drugs, right? <laughs> John Youngin, who was county extension agent in Jacksonville for a number of years, he and I did the original studies on the great scarlet poppy, and uh, which is the atmosphere environment here is precisely the same as Izmir, Turkey, where codeine comes from. That's Mellencroft. And we need to have our own infrastructure of herbal pharmacies because when the grid goes down, you're not going to have your heart medicine accessed. You need to have your little garden park going with your own little pharmacy. Simple. It's also part of the urban farm project of North America that we're doing. We started in Chattanooga. I'm giving you some prep on this so that you have a sense of where we're going. We took 12 playgrounds in Chattanooga and we converted them into community gardens. <coughs> And then we had the children come in with master gardeners as facilitators growing wildflowers for wildflower salads. I've got pictures of it. And then they went into the streets and fed the homeless, paying it forward. Now this is a paradigm shift in agriculture. 
with educational reform. And I don't like the word reform because I've met Temple Grandin. There's nothing wrong with her. I am a functioning savant. I don't think there's anything wrong with me. It is our diversity that makes our wealth in the children. And to do a common core form is actually getting rid of where our wealth and richness truly lies in our community. And so with that, I have a sense now that that's where we're going to go in terms of our children, where gardening becomes a recreational sport and you compete with each other just like you do with soccer. And yes. Doctor, I, I'm a little confused because you talked about Fukushima as uh, an extinction Right, event. that's why they have the Avatar program. But that then, whole we're, thing but about then we're, 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 we're making sure that we have enough water in a garden. If it's an extinction event, why do I need water in a garden? Because there will be people, even though it's an extinction event, there will be people that survive. It's going to require a whole new concept in hygiene, where you take your shoes off outside and you take showers before you traipse into your bedroom, that kind of thing. You. you have greenhouses rather than open gardens. You have uh, your water source is filtered. <coughs> now, I've just written an article on fullerenes. People interested in that? On what? Okay, okay. It's a brand new concept. What they're doing is they take 60 carbon atoms and they form a buckyball. There are 70 carbon atoms and 120, they're all buckyballs. It's the C60 everybody's interested in. I've got the article. What they're doing, what we're doing, is we put exclusion zone water inside it. That's H3O2. And then it forms nanotubes, and we give lethal doses of radiation to rats, feed them this fullerene water, and there's a 95% recovery. How does it work? This started in the Ukraine and it's now being reproduced in other places uh, in Russia. It's a reproducible thing. The second part is the bad part of fullerenes, where instead of putting exclusion zone water and making it a super antioxidant, what they're doing is putting deuterium or tritium inside it, and now they have what's called a neutron fullerene fusion bomb. And it was deployed is being deployed everywhere. I have the patents. If you want information on that, that's new articles that are coming out in Nexus. The next issue was the good side of fullerenes. The next one's the bad side of fullerenes. It's like nuclear energy. You can heal with it, or you can have war. You have a whole gamut of possibilities. It is possibly the most important development in nanotechnology to date. NASA, in their document, The Future Weapons of War, the war after next describes that weapon to a T. And we also describe chemtrails in terms of bio APIs. And we're going to talk about that a little bit if you'd like. Let's see what we've got for my slide to get started. Question on the fullerenes. The, uh, the shogun is mostly located in uh, Russia. That is, uh, the sh shogunites um, are a natural source of it. It's in space everywhere. That one asteroid we docked on. It's a solid diamond. I don't know if you knew that or not. Now, so it was a solid diamond, big piece of diamond, had fullerenes all around it. By the way, fullerene structures are 100 times stronger than diamond and are what they're making the space elevator of right now. What do they think about fullerene? Fullerene, F U L L E R E N E. Fullerene. There's an article fullerene. in the current Nexus magazine about yes, it. Yes, that's correct, yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, the literature is all over. Let the buyer beware when you go out to buy this stuff from who knows what. Good luck with that. Um, Rustin Roy was doing work with homeopathic medicine studies uh, where they're doing um, Raymond forms of spectral photometry because they can get you know variations in, in the ortho and para water forms. Uh, water, as you know, has isomers, right and left-handed. Right? Everybody know that? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, just like you have a right and left hand, there's two kinds of water. And, you know, the dipole moment goes that way or the dipole moment goes that way. And basically, uh, what they're able to do is ignite this thing with a new teleportation device that I wrote about yesterday. I've just been busy 
trying to write all this shit down because I'm trying to get it together and done before I croak. Well, <laughs> yeah, I've only got a few more minutes on me here. <laughs> so, I am a product of the power tools that I developed for SEALs. The cordyceps and ensis, some of the other things that we'll talk about that you can do, will change your life because they're like polysaccharides. I'll just do a quick one on mushrooms. Um, a sugar molecule is small. You have beta-glucans. They look, they're small enough that they look like invading bacteria or viruses. They have that same kind of structure. That's a beta-glucan. That's why when you take beta-glucans, you put your body on red alert and it sharpens your immune system for NK killer cells release and, and things like that. But then you have polysaccharides. These are big sugars, sugar polysaccharides. Each polysaccharide, and there's a variety of them, cordyceptin, and there's a whole list, have oxygen. And when they break down, they release oxygen into the body on a cellular level. You can't get enough, uh, you can't get enough, oh, it's getting hot in here. Uh, you can't get enough oxygen in your body. And that's what these hosts of pharmaceutical mushrooms, reishi, maitake, you know, turkey tail, there's a whole, there's about 72 different pharmaceutical mushrooms that have beta-glucans, polysaccharides, sugars that do things extremely important to your body. What oxygen does is it creates ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and that includes the brain. And I have a technical paper at Cornell right now in second review uh, called Cold Fusion Processes with special application to adenosine triphosphate. ATP, if you look at it, is a quark gluon plasma. It's where cold fusion occurs. That means you can eat it and increase your juice. That's why it's chapter one and why I've trained SEALs. You start with the physical plane and some place to launch for a super soldier. You start with your health and that's a reflection of your spiritual and your emotional and, you know, the relationship of the different planes and the way you would look at the way you store information in yourself. So, we hybridized this polysaccharide and created a superfood. It's a hybrid form. And then we put it in nanometer, 10 to minus 9. Usually, capsulating will be um, 80 mesh, U.S. standard. That means 80 particles per inch, that's encapsulation. It's a smaller, finer powder than tablets, which is usually 20 mesh. Nanometer is way down the scale there, and the way they shred it down to that size by, you know, nine zeros, nine zeros, is they run it through a jet engine at Mach 4, and it shreds the polysaccharide down so that if you sprinkle it on your hand, it will fall into the hand by gravity. Okay? Everybody getting the, the new delivery system in pharmaceutical wow. brain. Well, no, it's, it, that's why nanometer nanotechnology is exploding. It's going to change everything. Actually, the NASA document discusses the three breakthroughs that are happening in physics, which is information transfer, genome expression, and nanotechnology. Those are the three things that are going to change our universe. And so the Kurtzwellians and those that are seeing the end of the earth as it for man have developed this transhuman construct where we have avatars. And we actually have Avatar 1 program not working, functioning right now. Avatar 4 would be where you could go down on Jupiter and have your body in orbit and be able to walk on Jupiter with the kinds of gravity and things like that. That's where we will be in 2050, as NASA is accurately predicting it. We have interstellar drive now. Boeing has a magnetic monopole. Magnetic monopole is when you have two magnets. Yeah, you pull them apart. You turn the one magnet the other way like this. Try to push them together, they don't. So you put a screw in this one and you screw the other one in, and as you screw it in, it bends space. It creates an inertialist space form 
that we would call a wormhole. It isn't a wormhole, and usually the new dome craft that have it have either three or four, like a like a chair, and supposing your space is not flat, warped, three will balance, four is more stable, but it's harder to balance them, and that's where we're at right now with Interstellar. Yes, ma'am? Why do it? Why do it? Like a dog that can lick its because it can. I don't know. But, you know, it's, uh, I don't have all those, you know, okay, I'll put it this way. I have looked at, for the military, two artifacts. I've seen two artifacts. I actually did studies on them. Now, whether or not they're from alien or they're from previous technologies like the Nazis were always interested in, who knows? I, I don't know where that part is. You know, they never gave you full disclosure, just like even with my classifications, I never got the whole story, even though I was the man that was doing it. Um, probably never know. That's the other bad news part of that. It doesn't work like that. Everything, everything is a false flag. And the truth will never probably be known. For example, I personally have been to Antarctica. I've seen the Nazi base. I saw the Viking base that was there in the 14th century. Seen that. Where was that in the history books? Okay, Berg got his tail whacked with three ships lost. There's some Russian videos out on that. You can watch them. There it is. And yet, nobody seems to know anything about that. And the people that I'm meeting now, and I'm back into the boys from Brazil, they have a lot of disinformation to be safe. And that's what Gordon Duff will say right out of the, right out of the gate. Yes, sir? No. No, this is Thank you. I know, I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of information. Yes? It was recently uncovered a 15th century map of Antarctica under the ice, completely yep. accurate. It's well known. By the way, Lenny was part of, which movie was it? What in the world are they spraying? Which one? What in the world are they, are they spraying? Yeah, Lenny was part of those guys. So he's one of the originals in some of the original disclosures. Actually, just a couple days ago, a couple pilots came out with whistleblowing. And so what's happening right now is everybody's starting to get there's something wrong with the USS America. It's taking on water. You know, we're about to have, I don't know if it's going to sink. I don't know what's going to happen. But it's time to man the lifeboats. And you have five years, starting from 2015 to 2020, and that's NASA document again. And that's what I'm going to be talking about on Caravan to Midnight on the 30th. And that will be only a one-hour show about the boats we're building, little communities like what Asha Deliverance and others are doing here in Ashland as a infrastructure for, you know, community budgeting and things like that. You're actually, the way I say it on radio now is that what you have to barter is your joy. Whatever it is that inflames you is what you have to barter as valuable to the humanity. And at some level of the hologram, I can't get out of here until you do your part. And that's the way it's going to work, because we're all of us at one level in the archetypal level or collective unconscious. We are all the same humanity. And it's personally, I think we've been invaded. We can talk about blood types and, and the unknown gene and the fact that the war for Earth is probably going on inside each of you mm -hmm. right now. And what we're all being done is being distracted by what is really important. And what you have to do is realize that money is like a theatrical prop. It's not real. What's real is your labor. What you do and your children are watching you. Which means that while you may not be able to save this earth, that's where they learn how to do it. When I was down in Mexico, I went by Mexico City on my way through Pueblo, and I can tell you, I have never seen anything like that. This is a hundred miles of solid ghetto. 
and it, like from here to Roseburg, with just solid burials, old kids with tech nines running through the streets, drugs, human trafficking, whatever, and yet the children were happy because the family was still intact. That's what's wrong with America right now. Mm -hmm. There is no family for the kids to learn how to do it as the next generation of mini-me's being reincarnated into the future. And so what I would suggest is that we, there was a congresswoman that actually held open hearings in Arizona on, on chemtrails. <coughs> All of it out, full disclosure, everybody's talking about it. And then she came out publicly and said, there's nothing we can do about it because it isn't a U.S. project. Now, Department of Energy is the primary culprit that's doing aerosols, and I'll show you some slides on what they're doing. They're coming out of Portland, and they're ending up down in Klamath Falls, and then doing the background. And they're funded. This is the weird part. When the United States government went broke, and they put guards on the war memorial so wheelchair vets couldn't even go visit their fallen comrade. I looked up and they were still laying chemtrails down. How many saw them today? Yeah, there they were. And you can see them going right through. The, they're usually either in the stratosphere or the troposphere, predicated on which group is doing it. I have so far identified eight different projects that the uh, I uh, might as well get into my slide here a little bit and just give you a little visual so you don't have to. So, Rick, is this being done by higher levels of it? Higher levels. Like the national corporations, transnational corporations that are bigger than our country. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of fear. How can we comment? Um, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk to the sea for my own soul. Uh, that's a metaphor. Uh, I don't have the full answer because a congresswoman can't do anything about it by whom. That's the big question. And there are eight different ones. Right? One of them is Monsanto with the United Nations on their new aluminum-resistant GMO. Go figure. Um, originally, in the 50s, actually in the early uh, late 40s, San Francisco airport was pretty awful, and uh, they couldn't get flights in and out, so they started working with seeding the clouds with iodine crystals. And we can explain how that all works, and it would get rid of the fog so that the aircraft could get into, you know, foggy areas like San Francisco. Now, they have a series of different kinds of systems now where they're either using aerosols, they're, uh, they're doing a cloud smoking. We'll show you some of that in a minute. Uh, this was the original chemtrail to control fog. And they used iodine crystals, and this is how it worked. It was a very simple thing. They dropped the crystals into the cloud. Usually Medford would be doing that. You know, in February, they would be, you know, seeding the area so that the aircraft could get in and out. And they were doing that here and less than 15 years ago, when the airport was still the Red Baron parking lot those days. And uh, the clouds were with silver iodide. And the reason is that iodide has a structure similar to water, which means that the water adhered to it, and then you had ice droplets, and then you could change the weather because of ice crystals and things of that nature. That was how it started. <coughs> Then they started doing aerosols, and what they've done is up in the stratosphere, there's life forms up there. It, it's, uh, there's bacteria up there that's called a extremovite. It, uh, it's uh, like the kind that would live down a lava tube. It's, in, it, it's, it, this is a bacteria that can survive at 100 below Fahrenheit. That's what you have up there, and that, the temperature up there in, in the stratosphere. And these uh, bacteria, what they did is they brought it down to Earth, and they mutated it and changed it into an antibody that creates a polymer. It's a little geometric structure of plastic. It's a plastic polymer. That's what's in your body right now. You can put a swab inside your mouth, 
and put it on the slide, and at 600 mics, you can see the polymer. What is that doing to you? As near as I can figure, with the limited physics that I can garner, basically, that polymer is micro-dehydrating you like it's doing the atmosphere, which means that you're all going to have more immune system problems because you're not getting enough water. Even though you're drinking enough water, you're not getting access to it. That's exactly what it does. This polymer gets lined with barium oxide and it desiccates the water right out of the atmosphere, right into it, forming artificial clouds. And can I ask something? Yes. Plastics are also endocrine system disruptors, hormones. They do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Actually, it isn't so much the polymer that I'm concerned about, but the barium oxide in it that would be desiccating your body, just like it does the atmosphere. It's a metaphor. And that's my first concern, is what it's doing to our health. Um, there is a thing called chemtrail cough, and I don't know if any of you have noticed that your saliva is now whiter. That's a good way to look at it. Look at your spit and see what color it is compared to what it was 10 years ago. Um, if you think this is normal, you're a conspiracist. That's, I, I just threw this together uh, with some graphics. Let's try to cope. Listen to this. Look at that sky. What's wrong with that aesthetics of that, you know, just the visual? One of the reasons I used to like to go out into the woods is to be in nature. What's natural? So, wait a minute. Oh, there you go. Oh, I'm going backwards. Why are they putting iron in the ocean water? What's that? Why are they putting iron in the ocean water? Why is it going backwards? My What's that? Thank you. <laughs> I'm having trouble thinking about what I'm doing. Oh, that's a good one. I love, uh, I love this. Uh, where's my backwards face? Oh, you don't believe in chemtrails? I guess you should know that from looking down at your smartphone. Uh, you know, smartphones are actually quite toxic. Within two minutes, holding a cell phone up next to your head, I can get a heat signature with infrared. Right out of the gate. We're not even talking about the dosimetry of other uh, radiation bands that uh, Deal, D-E-A-L, uh, others have been writing about on uh, the microwave dosimetries. There's every frequency band has some kinds of organ responses. Everything. And our exposure to all the microwave bands and all these flowers that are up now, they weren't here, what, four years ago? Yeah. We're ten times the radiation exposure in dosimetry. And there is LD50 ratios on some of these. Yes, ma'am. What about the uh, new technology that it will give you phones without cellular towers, um, non-cellular phones? What about that? I don't know anything about those yet. Feel free to tune me up and I'll try to research. I don't know anything about those yet. I do know about the new directions in teleportation where you can't, you don't need to encrypt, you can go directly this to the individual. This is in other countries now. Yeah. They have well, like phones without, that are not cellular. Well, they're frequency bands, so, you know, the guy that, at Motorola that actually invented the chip, I'm a solid state physicist, that's what I did in my master's. And uh, I'm actually a resident <coughs> physicist, but I started as a transistor guy. I worked for R.B. Murray. And basically, um, what the computer thing is about now, I've lost my train of thought, I was trying to say something about the, uh, Motorola. what? Cell phone. Motorola. So, oh, he went, this, the scientist was on Dan, um, Mike Wallace six times. And the sixth time, he, Mike Wallace said, well, why did they choose, um, you know, the six megahertz bandwidth, you know, the five and six that they used? Now, and he, his response was, before he died of a brain tumor, was, there's too many people in the world. Wow. Cell phones were developed as a marketing thing to reduce populations. I saw one of the flags in the false flags of layering. Uh, they're toxic. Yes, Paul? Um, Rick, maybe you're going to answer this ahead of the time. But how many different kinds of heavy metals are they spraying in the atmosphere, and why the heck are they doing it? 
We're going to get there. I don't have all of the answers. What I'm going to talk about is some of the creepy that I'm now understanding about this nanomite, uh, nanobot that's creating these polymers. Um, it just fuses out and you have an explosion of light form and all of a sudden you have a waveguide for a microwave band. That's the military part. The primary Department of Energy arm project is, and I'll try to get into this as we get further, there was aerosol projects to enhance radio and microwaves. That's when we started with ARC. Um, I was part of the designing on this with us one, and that's why I got to know Nick when he wrote his book, Angels Don't Play This Art. And then we became good friends, and then he became, got me back into physics. He's the one that actually, Nick is the one that got me to return to writing in physics again, rather than being a grumpy old farmer. What I'd rather be. You know? Yes, ma'am. What about Jeannie Ma Manning? Jeannie Matt, was she the one that co-authored with him? Yeah. I don't know her. I never met her. I know his brother Mark. Uh, Mark is a junior senator from Alaska. He told me he was going to run again, and now he is. Uh, the reason is that Congress is not what you think it is. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Well, uh, you have transnational corporations. So 40th down, Yes, yeah, Johnson & Johnson Wax down here. This is pharmaceuticals. There's other kinds of corporations in, in the pharmaceutical. Johnson & Johnson Wax, uh, the state of Oregon's budget is $8.4 billion. That's Johnson & Johnson Wax's quarterly. Now that means that that company that's 40th down is four times bigger than the state of Oregon. And so when you start talking about fossil fuels and the import of, of fuels from other countries rather than from our own reserves. Now you have manipulation on a level that has taken our rights away from us, where we are no longer the United States of America. We are something different. And in fact, the changes are happening across the board in all kinds of things. Things like Ferguson was not about race riots. Neither was Bundy Ranch. It was China was making a move on our utilities like they're doing in Canada. And so it's these large, there's one company, the one that's at the top end here, is 40 times bigger than the United States for budget. And that's just the pharmaceutical houses. Transnational corporations run everything. So how you're going to know when the shit hits the fan will be when Walmart closes its doors. Everything at Walmart right now has already started going up in price. They are no longer cheaper than Bymart. Mm -hmm. And that's changing. And within the next year, China owns 50% of Grants Pass, Oregon. I don't know what they own here in Ashland, but uh, <laughs> they, what they will end up doing is taking over our utilities. And if you don't think that isn't going to bang you, because what do you think a utility is besides garbage and disposal run by mafia? The Akita. That would be water, possibly the air you breathe. It gets better and better. Well, you have some options. So, Rick, when these co great corporations have this much power, they're being infected too, aren't they? Oh, yeah, but say, uh, when I was in the military, um, I had uh, vault permits. That means I could go into certain vaults without a need to know. And I went into this one vault and, in 1970, and I saw that in 1967, they detonated a nuclear warhead on the south pole of Mars in their first unsuccessful attempt to terraform it. If you'll notice, NASA has just come out on the new terraforming projects on Mars. I posted it on Facebook this morning. They found methane on Mars. Mm -hmm. Do you realize what that means? A leak. Yeah. So 1968, one year before the moon, I saw a joint manned expedition to Mars, and guess who the partner was? It was the Russia, which we were in a cold war with. How does that work? 
So Mars has been colonated a long time ago. There's people on Mars right now. And I, what's methane all the way now? I'm sorry? What's methane? What's that mean if there's methane? Means there's life on Mars, or there was life on Mars. It is a byproduct. Your methane hydrates are what we're going to talk about and what geoengineering is about. And the fact that you find methane means there had to be life of some kind, bacterial, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So are you are you implying that they're moving to Mars? I'm not going to imply they're already moved to Mars. That's what I'm trying to. So in other words, the powers to be. No, uh, probably. There is a science fiction story, it's two books, it's called Aeon and Epoch by Greg Baer, B-A-E-R. And in the book, the way the Earth comes apart at the seams is probably how ours is going to come apart with a pole shift. And uh, it's going to be a pole shift where the mantle changes. It's a pole shift. And that's what the military believes is going to happen, is it'll be a pole shift. And the pole shift will be violent enough that nothing on Earth survives. Even if you're a bacterium down a latitude two miles down. Um, so, excuse me, excuse me. There have been pole shifts throughout the geologic record. We've seen them as far back as the Cretaceous. We've mapped them. You can see them on the ocean floor. Yeah. When the pole shift has, has occurred, it has not wiped off. Out the That's earth magnetic pole shifting, not crustacean, the crustal shift. Yeah, actually we had a magnetic pole shift uh, just two years ago, well, when the pressure on, on the backside of Earth was greater than from the sun because of the heliosphere dragging through what were called dragon tails or ionized particles in deep space and pushing as it went across it, it pushed back on the Earth and there was actually a magnetic field change and that's why a lot of your insects and, and birds and other kinds of things got all creeped out and died. That's how it's, I tell you, that's going to be your warning thing. Is when you see large shifts, that birds, for example, the way they navigate is they have a paracoupling form in their eyes where they can actually see magnetic fields. And as the magnetic fields change, because from the backside of the Earth, it confuses them. And they have, that's how they have killed on that. I'm not a geologist, and I don't have background on um, not fracking, but what is that? That methane hydrates that they're trying to pull out of the forest now. That is Japan's big super, here we go. This is how we turn off all our reactors and now we're gonna do methane hydrates uh, from the ocean floor. Yes, ma'am. Um, what you just explained, does that contribute to the wobble? What's that, yeah. The, that's why the Hopi, for a century, you know, David, uh, who was it? The Banaka and even before their grandfather Joseph, uh, we're talking about the ritual of the wobble egg. The earth wobbles. And that's Bert Bolin, University of Stockholm, Sweden, that was a Nobel Prize winner in uh, geoastrophysics. Different than uh, Wheeler in his geoelectrodynamics, which is a different form of the same problem. What we've got going on is what Joseph Campbell would say, that when you see the kingdom of the Father on earth, the apocalypse has already occurred. It is perpetual in its potential. In other words, apocalypse is part of being human. It's what part of making you get off your couch. You know, when I was in Mexico, the three key words used for describing Americans was ignorant, ill-informed, and complacent. And the children have no lead on what to do and how to do it. And it's your responsibility to work your own energy out because that's how they're going to learn it, seeing how you do it. I had this one wonderful quote from Woodstock where the guy said, for the first 20 years I wouldn't do anything my father did, and the last 20 years I'm trying to figure out how he did it. <laughs> well, let's get her. Just wondering if you would go back to the eight types of geoengineering. Oh, well, yes. The Project Argus started in 1958, and this is when we started realizing that the Van Allen belt and Schumann's residence and some of the resonant cavity oscillators that are in this structure 
are actually another kind of birth. And that was one of the things that led to studying uh, the different new radiation belts that we have forming right now. There is a brand new one that's not even on this draft that has to do with Fukushima and the nuclear particulate that now has formed another kind of Van Allen belt. It would suggest that nobody going into space is ever going to have children. Well, it's pretty serious. Is, is, do you think Fukushima was designed to help them with all their... No. Fukushima, as far as I can tell, was an accident. What happened mm -hmm. was on the 9th there was a coronal mass ejection that caused a... Uh, a, a, a what is it? It was a 5.7 or 6.4, and then there was an aftershock caused the tidal wave on the 11th. It was an aftershock. I don't think it was done with intent. I don't know. I can tell you, however, that the Daiichi-like reactors do not have spent plutonium rods. They're supposed to be clean, GE. Okay, well. and so it was probably weapons-grade plutonium being stored for saber-rattling to China or, who knows, uh, making Iraq, to, you know, so that they had improved their economy. I don't know what happened there. We'll never probably know exactly. Uh, basically, what the real goals of geoengineering were to try to eliminate this curve right here between your methyl, methane hydrates and methane gas in water. And just with slight variations of temperature, it goes up exponentially. That means that for every half a degree, you're going to have 10 times the problem. I don't like the square if you want to look at it that way. And uh, there are basic projects now to try and remove uh, the methane. Okay, the primary ones that you can see, the safety as opposed to to how easy is it to do and what its costs are. And right now, there are programs like growing trees rather than logging them that look a lot more interesting than dropping iron in the, into the ocean for but bacteria. Aren't they, aren't they killing the phytoplankton through all the aluminum and... and uh, that's, uh, yet yeah, you have, see, that's what makes algae, your red, greens, and blue algae so interesting. They are basically trace minerals. That's why all your vitamins are generally used from laminaria, bladderac, or, you know, some of the different algaes is because they have all these trace minerals. That's what they do. They absorb them. However, hemp does too. Hemp is a, a bioremediator. And one of the things we're working now with certain pharmaceutical mushrooms is that we'll put a, a field of rye and plow it under as a green manure, inoculate it, and then it'll bioremediate the heavy metals like uh, panathenium chlorates and some of the other things out of the soil. But the iron, I hear, is not doing good for the fire. Well, that's why it's uh, the safety. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Putting the iron it, well, that's why it's just one of a number of programs that they're doing. And they're all experimental because it's kind of like we're there's, you know, the way NASA does them, it's wonderful. They, they would, they call it planet Earth, a place, spaceship Earth, where, you know, we're plundering the food, our, our natural resources, and there's no uh, instruction manual. We're tinkering with life support, and we don't know what we're doing. And that's the problem with all of this, is that there's vested interest from a financial point of view to do a study this way over that way, and there is no oversight or due diligence in terms of, you know, accountability and or the related forms of that. Now, this project is kind of strange, but if you think that one's strange, that's the next one. That's probably your planet, what is that, Nibiru? It's probably a Dyson sphere. Uh, that's most likely what that artifact is out by um, Mercury. I don't know what it is. The NASA showed that artifact became uncloaked when that coronal mass went by it, and then it moved into the uh, corona of the sun and parked itself in orbit. And the only thing that can do that from a physics point of view would be a Dyson sphere or something. I don't know mythology on, on the rest of it. I don't know about. Should we explain what a Dyson sphere is? 
A Dyson sphere is uh, gold. It's a, it's a gold uh, bubble with yourself inside it so that certain radiation patterns can't get through. It's reflected. That's what gold does so well. But if it's in the corner of the sun, how can that, that structure that you just described? Wouldn't well, the electromagnetics the include heat. Oh, it blocks. It blocks everything. Ah, okay. Uh huh. All we, spectrum. What are we looking at here? This is another game plan using space mirrors, and uh, they're actually contemplating doing something like this. Um, Russia, last year, because of their forest fires, had a 25 percent reduction in total light to plants. Now, that's a good thing from a methane point of view in terms of. You know, trying to keep the planet cool or not letting it heat up. But as you saw, in the, it's not happening. And the hydrate studies that they're doing now are going to exacerbate everything. And of course, fracking is already in groundwater. So here we have <coughs> chemtrails. I uh, just threw this together because I, I didn't really know what to say. But I'm going to give you some countermeasures in terms of health. Um, your algaes, especially the Klamath blue-green algaes, what uh, Robert O. Becker and I did a study at the UW on that. Uh, what we found was that the blue-greens off of Klamath Lake have microshrimp and daphnia colonized in with it because it's a natural source. And that's where the neural peptides come from. And what you're doing essentially in these blue grains from Klamath Lake, if they've been freeze dried, because you de destroy neuropeptides at 97 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere right in there, 97, I think, <coughs> is that uh, it takes trace minerals across the blood brain barrier where now the neural cavity can generate true nerve tissue rather than glial cell. It's like a metaphor would be like trying to fly faster than the speed of sound without titanium. You don't have titanium. It's you don't have a structural form that is can take that kind of acceleration under the normal physics. <coughs> and so, um, what these things will do is generate real two true nerve tissue. We did studies on how that all works, uh, and it's uh, the heavy metal detoxifications. There are things like that. There's magnesium malate, and then the cordyceps sinensis. That's the one that I'm very interested in because what it actually does is it delivers oxygen to the body on a cellular level. And that cancers are eliminated as a byproduct. They can't exist in an oxygen-rich environment, and the studies keep going on and on. The Keferols, vitamin E. Vitamin C is probably one of the better things that's the one that they've discovered will do Ebola and some of the other things. The problem is Ebola, the, the uh, symptoms of Ebola are exactly the same symptoms as radiation sickness. Mm. And so Germany has been burying the nuclear waste from Europe in Africa for 20 years. And so it's not clear what part of that is from exposure to radiation and what part of it has to do with some sort of disease that isn't supposed to be airborne. Yeah, excuse me, you're going so fast. You want, you, the cordyceps sinensis is a mushroom. That's what it looks like right there. Aha. Uh -huh. It is a mushroom. Uh, it's easily grown in your home, in bell jars. Where do we find the, what started with the you mean the uh, spore for, yeah, yeah, probably in the Himalayas. In the Himalayas. Um, How does one Actually, actually, there bite. are two species of cordyceps that grow in Oregon. High, high, high altitude. Usually, you have to find it over 12,000 feet. So can, but can one find it in, for instance, some kind of nutritional store? Or yeah, home yeah. Oh, this store? is for sale, Aloha Medicinal Kitcher. Uh -huh. Just to interject, um, right here at Ashland Farmers Market, although it's not open now, there's uh, two gentlemen who have a business here that they sell, I believe, 10 medicinal mushrooms. It's like like chaga and rishi. They sell cordyceps. Yeah, so it's five after seven. Five, five yeah, after eight. Yeah, you can get it from 
people locally? It's five after seven. Five after eight. Thank you. I just well they they have other kinds. And just as an aside, yeah, I've read and I don't know that it's true because I've read that of all the medicinal mushrooms, that chaga is the most potent by far, especially when it comes to the beta gluten. Beta gluten polysaccharides. No, the polysaccharides are in a hybrid form, which is CS4, cordyceps sinensis 4, variation 4. It is, uh, there's, I have a technical paper on it with that we've hybridized it. It took us about almost three years to actually luckily get the hybrid form. Once we had it, we cloned it. Um, Chaga and uh, turkey tail, some of the others, um, they have different spreads of beta glucan. And that's why Nick Begich, for example, has full spectrum element where he takes six different pharmaceutical mushrooms to give you a broader spread. Then what he does is he puts transfer factor in it so it takes that enzyme and places it on a cell so that now it has uh, the ability to look like, look like, look for a bacteria or invading virus that look like it. You need to do transfer factor to make that system work. The beta glucans, though, are for the NK killer cell forms. The polysaccharides are about oxygen. It's a different mechanism altogether. And that mechanism is what I think is going to save Earth. That in the fuller range. I think that that those medical breakthroughs will allow. Questions? What's that? What's the name of That is called Cordyceps sinensis. Uh, what that's doing is that little mushroom is growing off dead larva. It's a symbiont. It's not a. It's not a. a yeah. It's a symbiont. Now there are others. There's saffron and flax and cinnamon. Other things that are, you know, anti-inflammatory. We, these are some pictures of methane bubbles coming off the earth, and then the methane cloud that forms because of the difference in temperature. And basically, that methane will make uh, our, our everything uninhabitable. So, me, uh, what did you say were anti-inflammatories you mentioned? The cinnamon, there's a number of anti-inflammatories that all have it. Cinnamon, and the one you're talking about will be the Tung Hing, which is a different genus than the Karinchi uh, with the, uh, uh, from Indonesia. There are different kinds of cinnamon. Okay, there's Tung Hing uh, form and then... Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, Kar Karinchi. Karinchi is yes, sir. Just to go back to the last frame on the sure. main issue. Um, let me, there, yes. And I had to bring it up because of what Dan Whittington and others in the genome engineering movement have brought up. The Arctic, are you familiar with what's going on? Through yeah, the they're doing a the methane. methane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what to believe. Um, some people that I respect say that the methane release situation in Russia right now is paramount, and they also say that geoengineering is making it worse. Do you feel it's... I don't know. I can tell you that I don't like the particulate in our air. Right. And here is where it gets creepy. With the fullerene bomb that I talked about, let's see if that... I'll keep that up. Uh, the fullerene bombs that I'm doing now is 1.4 nanometers. It's so small, you can't even understand it. And that's the precision of control on thermonuclear fusion that we now have with the National Ignition Facility. And it would be a small leap to put those in the aerosol, and now you're all walking bombs. It would be like the way I do it in, in radio, it would be the good Captain Kirk who's inhabiting the bad Captain Kirk's body in an alternate universe, and he has a weapon that he can bring up someone's picture on the screen, push a button, and they disappear. For example, a nanofiber of fullerene could be put in an aircraft in the seal, and there would disappear. There'd be no forensics. Hit with a simple laser beam, ignite it. I'm being with Judy Wood in February, March um, at the farm. 
and I'm going to discuss with her the new weapon that I've discovered with the patents and who's doing it and all of that. It's a Mossad weapon, by the way. And there is a high likelihood that it was deployed, not a new tactical nuke that was under the building, but the Building 7, when it came down, it came down in slag. There was no debris. And jet fuel doesn't get that hot, and neither does thermite. There's only one thing in nature that will cause a 617-foot beam that after the Building 7 went down, and then the beam started to fall down, and as the beam was going down, it vaporized. That's a plasma. So I think that this weapon has been deployed in Baghdad Airport, for sure, possibly Gaza. It, I don't think the Mossad did 9-11, but they certainly knew about it. And, and so, what are we going to do about this? Well, there's not a lot any individual can do, except activist groups like this where the media gets involved, we do a YouTube where other people start to walk, and then what we're doing is informing everybody, because at some point it will be like when Mahatma Gandhi walked to the ocean and the English were acting like thugs and it became present, you know, apparent to everybody who the culprit was. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Miller, if it's not on mainstream media, it doesn't exist. You're just a conspiracy theorist. May, the mainstream media right now actually is worse than Nazi Germany during World War II in terms of actual reporting of what's going on. I watched this nonsense about Sony yesterday on the media. I did a thing with Jeff Rentz, and, and Rentz was all over the thing on this thing. And what I, the media that I saw, was what happened in Sydney with the kidnapping, hostage taking. This woman got on a bus, she was afraid and she took her veil off because she was afraid of backlash of being a Muslim. And the woman sitting next to her said, I'll ride with you. And it went global because everybody's getting it now. It's not about race wars and the, and the Taliban and the ISIS and the everything else. It's all disinformation. What is the only place where you're going to find truth is inside your gut. Right here. That's where the real truth is. And while it might be different for each of us, that's okay. That's God's will. That means that even if we're in conflict, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, it is going to be, that's what made us God's favorite. We have the choice. And what we don't want to do is get distracted on what's really important. Now I'd like to talk to you about questions and things you like to do. Let me just turn this off. I was going to do some promotion. I'll just finish this so you can see the PowerPoint I put together and then we'll go to the real deal here. How do I do this? You yeah, there back then. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm good. Here we go. So, Rick, you yeah. never, Rick, you never finished. If the, the leader people choice, where are they? Where, why are they doing it? Where are they going? And then how can we take care of ourselves? Well, I think that the first thing starts with your diet. And even before the food you eat, I think your selection of water is essential. That's where you start, is where your water is. Uh, did it come from a public source? Did it come from a well? Did it go through a, a filtering device like fullerenes or, you know, the shugenites or whatever, some of the other, shungites, you know, the carbon filtering systems? They're so small. Talk a little about structured water also and what okay. Pollock is doing. You guys want to know about structured water? Yeah. Well, let me finish this slide quick. Yes, I will. I won't forget. I won't forget. I promise. So when he talks about structured water, are we going to understand how we can apply this? In yeah. Yes. Listen, there's, um, it's locked up. So what I'm going to do is not worry about it and move to the next thing. And Light turned off. Structured water. 
Dr. Jerry Pollack uh, has written a book called The Fourth Phase of Water. How many people have heard about that? Fourth what? Fourth Phase of Water. Oh. Uh, there are actually 18 phases. Jerry was the physicist that hired me to work in anesthesiology in 1970. He's a professor emeritus now at the UW. That's where I did my work. Jerry's an old friend. His work in water is followed by Rustin Roy uh, at Penn State. And then up at MIT, they were doing studies, Mark LeClaire, some others on structured water. This had to do with the dolphin, and they would blow these bubbles, and it would create uh, uh, a, a bubble of air called sonoluminescence. And what it is is about cavitation and the idea of, of air or uh, topological surface turning inside out on itself, like your hollow earth thing kind of sort of thing. DARPA. I'm sorry? DARPA. DARPA. What about DARPA? They did cavitation. What's that? They did cavitation. Of course. Cavitation is extremely important. What cavitation is, is, okay, here's what, here's what how stronger water works. You have a big pool of water, and you have a drop of water that hits the water. When it hits the water, you always see a little bubble that comes back up, and it comes and settles up. When the drop of water hits, waves go out. At the same time, when the drop of water hits, waves go in, and they slap, and they capture a small amount of air. In other words, it's not a water molecule. It is exclusion zone water that has trapped air. And if you look inside the air, if the topological surface is, it's cavitating into itself. That's called cavitation. What is cavitating? Your the air inside because of the exclusion zone water, which is H3O2, that forms a structure around the air. The dipole moments of the system causes this cavitation process because of H3O2. It's taking hydrogen peroxide and bringing in a third hydrogen molecule. All right, now, what that's doing is that when water touches anything, it, it changes. If it hits plastic, it doesn't do anything. If it hits indium, it goes right to the side of the wall in what you call surface tension. That's exclusion zone water structuring. And each metal is different in terms or, or saying that water touches, including carbon, inside a buckyball. You can, I can tell you, the physics of that is extremely interesting because now instead of cavitation, we're going to talk about a new concept, which is not cavitation, it's called super cavitation. And it has to do with Euler's equation divided by two. It's a whole new thing about hollow earth and how, you know, your other universe is inside the out of kind of thing. So what happens when it touches We'll talk, I'm sorry? What happens when it touches us? Well, we're okay. In different organs, that's why saying prayer at dinner mm -hmm. actually, with intent, causes changes in the structure of water. It's called the intentionality experiment. That's a little hokey pokey for me at this moment. However, I'm going to tell you that praying over water will kill vampires. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, uh, you know, holy water, it has an effect. Prayer and the concept of taking thought into, that was a moto that tried to do it, he's a little zen, but now we're getting the physics of how it works exactly. And when water touches anything inside your organ, it changes the way it touches the surface inside your organ. And if you don't think internal landscape is important in terms of how you're thinking about what you're doing, you got a glass half full, a glass half empty, and the other one's full of piss. It's yellow liquid. It's a metaphor. You okay? When it's half full, you have just been given something. When it's half empty, you have just lost something. It's the same glass. You have choice. And that's the internal landscape that structures the water. Now, let's go to what structuring water really means. When you take two metals, gallium and arsenic, and you slap them together, they create a forbidden zone 
that is your check register, check some error where you store all your information. It's called the forbidden zone. And we have the same thing six zeros lower with water. It's a million times smaller called the exclusion zone. And it's a check register and that will be our next computer. What will be six zeros more efficient than our current solid state physics chips that we have today. So structured water, we're only just now understanding. Like what Mark LeClaire would say that structured water is where God is on earth. Paul. Okay, two questions. First of all, H3O2 can't possibly be stable. No, it isn't. It, it is, um, in its structuring form, it is constantly talking, which is called the entanglement thing, where it's passing its information to the next molecule because of the structure of the dipole. And that's why it's the outer layer that is the exclusion zone, and then you have different forms of things. And then, of course, you have ortho and para, and then you got to throw in isotopes like deuterium and tritium. And Okay, and then the second question, what are the probable benefits of exclusion zone water? What are the practical applications? Hydration? Better hydration? Absolutely better hydration. So, drinking water that had been run through a blender, <laughs> vortexing it, causes structure. That's why a waterfall has H7, uh, H709 with a free radical ion clusters in three groups, three water molecules, and they, the way they cluster, an ion, activated ion, and that's why you feel healthier around waterfalls, and, yes ma'am? Well, oh, plus, just drinking it, you know, like Jackson water, this has, besides all the aluminum that's falling, they add aluminum to the water. Well, so, what my seals used to do, when we're in foreign lands, okay. is we carry a little vial of baking soda. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Small amount, just a pinch, in your water changes the pH. Well, right on, because the exclusion zone, just by the baking soda going in there, the water structures around it, and it changes the pH. Well, they do that in but that doesn't mean you're not getting the aluminum when you add that dice to your lemon. Well, so what we're suggesting now, that if you take exclusion zone water and you put it inside a buckyball, it forms a fiber, a nanofiber, that will go in and isolate heavy metals and ionizing radiation in the body. And out it goes. It wraps itself around it, isolates it so they can't do the deed. Does Mike have to go to oh, the microwave to cleanse the water? Or, I was the product, the it does that. Mica is a, Mica it's is a different uh, silicon. <clears throat> it's a sand. It's not a carbon. Okay, it's different in terms of structuring them. To go back to you know, the, the physical level of Sarah's diet, you said that was key focus, the water. The water is more important than diet. There are a series of food groups that you can do, like the structuring of the water, like you can do a little, you know to put it through a Berkey, right? You could, you put it through a Berkey, a filter, carbon filter. Supposing that carbon filter was some guy, instead of activated charcoal which, by the way, is really close. That's another prepper thing you should know how to do. You should know how to go to your campfire and make your own activated charcoal. That's a really good thing to know how to do because that will probably save your life. Activated charcoal is the next best thing to fullerenes. Now, what you do is you can create exclusions on water with microwave. So patent down on it. What you do is you have your water sitting here and you hit it with a microwave, and now what you have is a seed. Because a single drop of that in your Berkey, that your exclusion zone water, single drop of that in the Berkey restructures the water. That's the homeopathy thing that Austin Roy was doing at Penn State. Why just drink the single drop if you could drink the whole thing of water from the microwave? No, that's what my, that's what my office manager did. She took this extremely important thing and just drank it down. And went bang <laughs> and detoxed. And now it's all gone and I don't have any more and to more detoxing. <laughs> you know, that, 
Because it's never ending. Well, why can't you just keep putting it in the microwave? Could be more and more water. Well, you don't put it in a microwave. Oh. It's That's awesome. the wrong frequency band. Oh. It's a very narrow bandwidth. There's a patent on it. Uh -huh. And getting the right kind of a horn is a laboratory thing. But I think somebody could set something up here in Ashland and have a business. Yes. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good project to do. Oh, Granola, yeah. Blue Harrison. And, oh, and, and what is a buckyball? You keep mentioning that. A buckyball is 60 carbon atoms in a way that it forms a ball yeah. with certain sides to it that have vector equilibrium matrix. That was a Buckminster Fullerene, that's what they call it. Oh, I see, Buckminster Fullerene. Buckminster okay. Buckyball, Buckminster right. Fullerene. Right, one other thing. Still don't yep. understand. Uh, the gentleman up front mentioned that um, something was unstable. Uh, the uh, What kind of water was it? H3O? H3O2. Okay. Was unstable. Not unstable. It is stable. It will break down with light. Okay. That's how the photosynthesis works, as a, as a matter of fact. And guess who did that one? That's uh, uh, my buddy down at Caltech, Feynman. Okay. So it, it, that's unstable in light. Isn't it's that, not unstable. Kind of water is that you call this? You're okay. constantly generating it in your body with intent. It oh. is your thoughts that actually change the water in your body that is what we call internal landscape. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say in my book, the thoughts you choose to entertain, you have a responsibility for that. Whether they came from somewhere else or they came from you, it's, that's what's creating your reality. That's what's structuring the water in your body, and it acts as a projector into the physical world. Wow. And Jungian psychotherapy would say that if you have anger, you're going to have cancer. So that's how your higher self talks to the lower self, is through illness. And that once you get the message, there's no need for the illness. It's a metaphor in the way you relate to self. It's a tool, and you have to be mindful, just like you do when you're meditating and you drift. You have to bring yourself back into true. Chemtrails, I don't know how to stop them. I don't have the answer on that yet. Stay tuned. I am, you know, in a pro work in progress. Remember, I only just started back on chemtrails at the beginning of this last year. That's, I just, I didn't have very much information, and then I started digging. And let me tell you, there's a lot of creepy things out there to, to be discovered about it. A lot of different things. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to add, part of my purpose is to protect people. I had a near-death experience four years ago from environmental toxins. One of the things we can do, Mother Nature knows what she's doing, and we have to trust her, and we have to keep going back to that, especially with our thoughts. But one of the things we can do is eat the rainbow of colors every day and protein every meal, and go back to the basics. Sleep seven and a half an hour to nine hours a day. Get in bed by nine so your body can detox itself. There's a whole bunch of things we can do. I created a, website, a Facebook page called Public Health Information. Uh, it's just those words, public health information. I've been doing this for four years, just putting everything I can get my hands on on there. Good luck on that. Yeah. I have other friends that are doing that as well, yeah. forming gardens. I have a friend that's a quantum botanist, and he's been generating a lot. He does his stuff on the Vonage yeah. manuscripts. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And don't forget the healthy fat. Yes, very Stay off important. the carbs, all the carbs. Oh, stop it, man. Yeah. I used to say a long time ago, you are what you eat. We should all be eating at least a cube of butter a day. You want to help with that. It's totally destroying So, everybody that I know that eats raw is healthier than me. I mean, everybody I've met that does raw, somehow has got better health. I wanted to say one final thing and then we'll do questions. Uh, if we are no longer what we eat, we are whom we feed. Man is not human. He's only 10% human and the rest of it is bacteria, viruses, mold, 
water transport processes, you're a habitat. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you look at yourself as a habitat, not just, you know, as a unique, that you got a, a cooperation going around, everybody's different. Homeostasis of health is different because some is a whiner, the other is a conehead. You know, Saturday Night Live, just in its finest thing. The idea of being able to understand yourself as unique as a specific galaxy is. You're a series, and, and it's micro, macro, whatever. That's a holographic model to be distinguished from a quantum mechanical model. And uh, I, if these are metaphors for how you see what's going on. It doesn't mean it's right. Or models. In physics, I don't know any law in physics that's lasted longer than 20 years, except maybe Maxwell. You know, getting out of here with the right hand rule of thumb. The idea that there's something more going on here, and we're only in the 21st century. We don't even have a clue yet. And so we got this big venture. I know of four mammals on this planet right now that are more evolved technically than men. Wow. Which ones? Orca has a cerebral cortex that's twice the size of man, and that mammal is firing 60% of it. If you want to know who God is, not your God or my God, but God. God meaning going places man will never be able to go. That's orca. And then who lower on the food chain is dolphin. And their form of play is sonoluminescence, which is cold fusion. There's a pilot whale and manatee. All four cetaceans have bigger brain cases than man. We don't have a clue. I've watched elephants paint themselves with their brush, yes. depicting an awareness of self that none of us have. And the gorilla, what was that gorilla? Bad gorilla, what was that, Congo? No, it was that Coco or whatever it was. It had a sense of something more, like God. So, we're not the center, and certainly the song is not about us. It's, you know, there's something else going on here. And so I think that we have to be mindful about our thoughts and what we choose to be paranoid about and what we are excited about, because that will be what creates the reality, literally. And that if you want to save this earth, how is it, is Rudolf Steiner? We're no longer at war in the physical world. If we want to save this world, we save ourselves and the world comes with us. And that's because it's every single one of you is part of this archetypal level of what I define as man, where I am you and you are me and I am the walrus. That is the relationship of it and why I can't even get out of here until you get your thing together. We're all in it together. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, ma'am. With this assault on humanity, do you think somehow the ETs might be involved in this? Well, that was the fourth genome blood type, the one that's unknown and is not human that we don't know or that reaches negative. There have been studies on the bloodlines of Christ and, you know, formal. Sir Lawrence Gardner or others that have done that, that would suggest there's a fourth genome blood type. And why now man is classified as homo sapiens, sapiens. You had a question, I, I, I meant to come back to you. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Um, I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you something about mitochondria. Yes. Um, so um, I have a kid who's been sick for a couple of years, and I had her tested in through a, a doctor in England on mitochondrial function. Right. And at the same time, I was listening to Shasta County uh, chemtrail um, group and the Air Force, retired Air Force guy was saying how the Air Force had done this, this experiment on rats and showed inhaling aluminum nanoparticles cause right. mitochondrial dysfunction. And yes, okay. they do. That's yeah. the barium and aluminum again, right. related with the... So that's what my kid has. She has mitochondrial dysfunction. She has clumping on the cell membrane. So I would put her on a Phanonophis on plus aqua, the blue greens off of Klamath Lake, okay. and not Celtech where they chelate it, okay. but you want to get it from one of the farms that, like now foods, where it has been freeze dried, where they take the whole thing and they freeze dry it from solids, and that may not 
help, it won't it'll improve the quality of her life. It'll take about three months because the actual nerve tissue that's being generated now, which is what she needs, uh, not glial, um, will come down like the cup falls. It's a gravity thing. And so to come down the spinal column, you know, and like it does, takes gravity. A bouncing, you know, bouncing. Those are good exercises where she's upright and she's actually using gravity as a tool to move the new glue. Of nerve tissue through her body. I uh, the study we did. I had a severed perineal. Severed. Took me four and a half months to get complete regeneration of my nerve trunk. I did it, and we did it around a body of doctors. And to my knowledge, it was only that one. Spirulina and chlorella won't do it because they don't have micro shrimp and daphnia in it, which is where the neuropeptides probably come from. We don't know that either. We just know. There's neuropeptides in the, in the blue grains from Klamath Lake. By the way, all the lakes in, on the west coast, in Priest Lake, Coeur d'Alene, they all have a found enough Klamath Less Aqua, the blue grains. Yes, sir. Just to be helpful, Power Organics out of Mount Shasta has the blue grain from Klamath. Right. And ancient Sun, a lot of people that follow this forget, they like Ancient Sun from North Carolina because they have a different process and they don't do the Well, what you want, yeah, what different. you want is either Mercer or Van Drunen Farms out of San Francisco are the ones that do most of the freeze drying. Uh, those are the two primaries that will do the processing. And um, there were, at the time I left that industry, I had five farms. Five different individual farms on, were farming it off the lake. So that might help her. Dr. Miller, also I just watched a film called Take Back Your Power by Josh Desol. Yeah. And he had Dr. Klinghardt, I think is the name, talk about how just standing in front of the smart meter for two minutes started that clumping in the blood. They took tests before the people stood in front of the meter and after, and the clumping started after two minutes of just in front of the radiation. Oh, so avoiding the EMFs, oh, and there are ways you can do it. I am, I'm doing it. In the sleeping areas, especially at night. It just watch the There are some rehab things that could be done to augment. Um, I'm not in that field. I can hook you up to with Norm Sheely. No, Dr. Norm Sheely is a personal <clears throat> friend, and I, you know, will take any, you know, anytime I, you know, I can, I can hook you up with him, and he might have alternatives that might be worthy of pursuing. Dr. Norm Sheely. Um, more questions? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Well. Oh. No. No. Okay. You said it first. <laughs> Um, I don't know that anyone can answer this question, but it would seem to me, I, I would intuit, that all the horrible things that are being done to our planet, yep. and that are, could very well cause extinction of the human race, or of all life for that matter, mm -hmm. that the, those 40 corporations you mentioned that control the world, they must have the, the, some of the best scientists in the world working on this, right? In order to, to even form these things. Now, I understand that the primary uh, motivation behind all this is greed and money, but it's going to cause extinction. It will cause their extinction as well. So why would they, why would that be their goal? Get out of jail card. I don't know. I can tell you that the prime directive by anybody's standards, is that there's too many people on Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, there are lots of studies that show that, for instance, in the Arabic world, that it will be, that it is already past the point where they're, because they limit the number of children and families can have, yeah, I know. they won't be able to replace their infrastructure, and that the societies will collapse. Because they're, and, in, and in Western Europe too, in Germany, for instance, there aren't enough people now to replace infrastructure, so it's not a matter of population explosion. There are too few people in some areas of the world. Well, I have been reminded of the lost children of China, and that whole fiasco, you know, mm -hmm. people having a third child and sentenced to death. Yeah. Um, I don't have the answers in that regard. I think that's why they invented AIDS, mm -hmm. to limit 
and frighten and stop free love. Remember the 60s? And then it became the 70s. I was and it was there. real creepy. Yeah. And you didn't know who you were going to be with because it wasn't like the 60s where everything was go for it. Mm -hmm. It changed. That's prime directive as a metaphor. And now they've ramped it up. And the cell phones are exhibit A. Fukushima is, while Fukushima is the probably right now in my mind, the single most important thing to be talking about, Chemtrails <coughs> Geoengineering is right here and is moving like this. It's getting, you know, I, at some point, I'm not sure how that one works mm -hmm. with, G, with GMOs and da 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 down further down. Now, the war in Syria, Dennis Kucinich came out at, with a paper saying the real reasons we're in Syria is about oil. Yeah. And when you talk about Ukraine and the fact that you have Ukrainian and Russians being killed by the same weapon, how does that work? You know, it, cause is that we're infiltrated by something, and it strikes me weird that the top 1% also represents the least human aspects of being human. Mm -hmm. And so it's time for us to take back self. So I suppose it could be seen in terms of, if you'll pardon the expression, folks, conspiracy theory, that that top percent we don't even aren't even aware of is trying to depopulate the earth in order to re-inhabit the earth with a different species. That's another scenario. That's a creepy one. Imagine the terraforming going on right now, you know, uh, right in front of our eyes, and we're. Uh, I came out of Taprock. I'll get you an insight, I promise. <laughs> I won't forget any. I came out of Taprock, and there was this guy looking up at the sky, this jet's laying it one down, and I said, you know, that's not a contrail, that's a chemtrail. And he turned around and he said, yes, it's a chemtrail. And I said, you know, that's really toxic. And he looked back up there and he said, no, it's not toxic. Why would he say that? Because if he were to acknowledge that it was toxic, then he would be obliged to also now have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the complacency part that we're all at war with inside ourselves. Of, you know, knowing what you're supposed to do and then actually doing it. And in the new book I'm writing, The Non-Local Mind in a Holographic Universe, I'm writing on how to change the movie, literally. And the way you do it, one, uh, one chapter is called The Stanford Argument. Stanford University, the philosophy of the difference between intent and intentionality. And the intentionality is the idea of Maxwell Smart saying to Agent 99, missed it by that much. You know, it isn't, it's what happens at the end of the day that is your true will. Not what you tried to do. By saying that you're going to try to do something, you have already left a door open for it not happening. It's internal landscape. It's the psychology of NLP. It's the idea of having in mind the star that's important. And each of us, it's a little different. He's next, sorry. <laughs> then you. I'm, I'm, I'm working on Got it. It's the idea of being able to keep your eye on the ball of what's really important. That is why all the saints told you to meditate, train the mind. This group right here, this facility is satsang. This is where Charan Singh and those teachings happen. I'm a satsangi. And Rod and Brooks run the sangha here. And so this is the idea of training the mind. You're, you're next, sir. Okay. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, no. Well, I'm curious about, I mean, chemtrails is something, there's some disagreement. We don't really know why they're there. Well, we there's eight how reasons. They're doing it, but what about alternative explanations? For instance, 
uh, ash from coal-fired power plants is 26% aluminum oxide. It's got manganese, it's got titanium, it's got uh, barium, all the same ingredients that we're worried about getting into the water system. It's already in the water. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, it's already there. I agree. It's coming from somewhere out of the sky. How much of it is, has anybody looked at the, whether that's a viable explanation? It's all part of tinkering with our life support, and we don't really know, have, a, have an instruction manual yet on how to run the planet. It's, it's tinkering in a, in a way because, I mean, especially the, the increase in, in industrialization of China and all the... Well, that's countries. exactly correct. It's that not, is where a, a lot of the particulars come from. destroy human, the earth. It's a conscious effort to make money by producing... And that's, and, and you did something I didn't bring up, thank you. China, right now, is the primary culprit in global warming. Even though there's other things going on with fracking and the other, you know, things that we're doing with this methane hydrates, uh, it's China right now in their industrialization. And if you don't think that's not a sleeping giant. And actually, all things said, I have to say something, no matter what else is said about Putin, he's the first Russian I've seen that has actually tried to give Russia back to the people. Yeah. 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 No, no, he's, 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 you know, he's not our friend, mm -hmm. uh, but he's a Russian, and you have to give him that. He's, <laughs> you know, he's, I have to respect him, but I dealt with Khrushchev. I, you know, listen. You don't even understand what we're up against here. And Putin's right now, their country is in a world of hurt. Can you imagine what it would be like if everything that you were buying for a dollar today now cost you a dollar fourteen? That's what's happened in Russia right now, today. It's an oil game. It's with fossil fuels. It's not about what you could do is take and tithe 10% of your driving to not driving anymore. That's a good place to start. <laughs> Two minutes? Okay, so I've got, you has a question. Did you finish it? Yes, ma'am. You haven't answered it. I didn't. I, I may not be able to, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But. Dr. William Casey, the head of the CIA in 1980, said, we'll know when our disinformation campaign has worked with everything Americans know is wrong. And it's interesting because also in 1960, the Club of Rome said that they were going to create problems and, and create environmental catastrophes to make mankind the end of the planet. Well, just that, a, yeah. Wait a second, then Gordon McDonald, LBJ's scientific advisor way back in 65, in the book, It Must Be Scums, if you can type that in. So, and, NASA... Let me finish, let me finish, because I okay, have a question yeah, I'm going to try so to... He said, that in his, his chapter, How to Wreck the Environment, that they would create covert weather wars, creating weather disasters, and people wouldn't know. They just think of no so weather So there my is. Question is. So my question is. Yeah. Okay. You know, because all these maps show, oh, we're going to put iron in the, north, uh, the ocean and, and create more phytoplankton. <clears throat> Meanwhile, all the phytoplankton is dying. We're not getting the oxygen. The carbon that they're saying is creating global warming, really, if anything, they are heating up the atmosphere. Yes, they that is an argument. 15,000 yeah. degrees. And my understanding is from somebody that John Holman, be, John, um, Obama's scientific czar, czar, gave an award to way back in around 1970, Brown. He said we'd have to put out five times the carbon mankind has put out since they've been on this earth to create enough particulates or change in you know, the atmosphere to create an ice age. Really, he said volcanoes and pollution and forest fires, that would do it. And if we could reduce the temperature four, 4 degrees centigrade, we could create a mini ice age. So my thoughts are this carbon is 100% PS. And, and that really, they're putting these particles out in the sky to then heat up the atmosphere and, and drastically rip around. Well, the whole the idea was and on the... The thing about carbon is, is PS. I understand. There is, before this recent NASA document that came out that was called 
um, the 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 um, the weapons the uh, weapons of the future, the war after the we uh, the weapons of the future, the war after next. Yeah, the the one that came out 20 years earlier. Secret weapons for silent wars. The, yeah, silent weapons for secret wars. That is, you know, the savings and loan. That was, they used their banking system. Okay, that's what Zeitgeist is all about in moving forward. The idea that we've had 400 years of currency, it doesn't work, and it's time to move forward. And that's what the Rainbow Family was all about. That's what Vanita Freaky and the Oregon Country Fair is about, the barter fair. But do you think carbon is actually having anything to do with the weather? Well, it of does course, in its it form is. with methane. Yes. It has to do with its form and relationship to methane. But you usually in the past, everybody says we have well, that's the one of the solutions is to plant a tree. Yes. And that's the second thing that you can do as an individual activist is to start planting trees and have your children see you do it. But they also said, I read an article saying they want to burn this area down. Well, I don't know about that part. I, you know, for me, I have a different relationship to timber and, and forest. And a forest, by the way, is not a tree farm. They're different. No. There was really something just signed. It would be more clear. What can be attributed to simple stupidity? Well, since they've the world. Um. Yes, ma'am. First, yes. Um. This is more of a spiritual question. It's not exactly science. Sure. Well, no. That's I hang out there. But um, there's a process called ascension that the whole earth and all humanity is experiencing. I understand that. And that is supposedly moving into the third dimension. And it's the third dimension that's going to expand. Right? Well, okay. Right now, uh, there's a movie, Interstellar, that has a very accurate metaphor, visualization of what five space would be when he goes through a black hole. And he finds himself in the library called Akashic Records. And he's communicating to his daughter by pushing books out of the bookshelf in cipher, hoping that she gets the message in the past. Now, that's a concept. The uh, originals on Five Space had to do with sliders and multiverse and the physics involved with that. But to think that the rapture is going to come and get you. I, I, you know, for my own evolution, I have to take personal responsibility for that. It isn't going to be given to me. We have to go out and do it. Well, I think the Earth herself is ascending. Oh, yeah, Gaia. As mycorrhizae and the quantum computation algorithms in the soil and the networking, there is a... There's a, a woman a forester up in BC that talks about the mother plant, mother tree, that sets up a network to tell when forest fires are going through, just like in the movie Avatar, the mother tree, you know, and the networking with Michael Rizia. Now, there is metaphor everywhere in that sense. I have to relate strictly as a scientist. Now, metaphysics means beyond. That means that when I'm dealing with the physical world physics, I have a meta worldview, a broader worldview. And the one I've chosen now is a holographic system that looks at levels of information and the way it collapses down into or expands out on itself. And that universe, space and time are simply connected. And the Bose-Einstein condensate where these two particles entangled at opposite ends of the universe you know, that when this is doing this is doing that, and somehow they're related. It's like that screensaver on a computer where the fish is swimming by and the other one's coming out at you like that. It's the same fish with two cameras on it. You can get your head around that. That's what is actually happening now, and you're mixing metaphors when you see things going this way and that way 
And in fact, they're the same thing from different perspectives. That's a physics thing. Yes, ma'am. So when's the pole shift going to happen? If the pole shift is going to destroy the Earth, when is that going to happen? Yes, well, that's the $24,000 or $64,000 question. Uh, four, three, two. Uh, Bert Boleyn, University of Stockholm, is like George Wheeler in geoelectrodynamics. And it's overdue. And right now, Russian NASA as actual, on the internet, talking about the actual movement of it moving toward Russia as we speak. It is actually physically now. That means that at some point, there's going to be some plate shifts. And actually, the Navy maps suggest that Grants Pass becomes the new waterfront. Now, FEMA went through and did a big thing last year called the big one. And they, you know, invited everybody in the public. And they're talking about an 8-4 off of Crescent City. And when that happens, the entire plate drops all the way from Alaska right on down through South America. The, if you want to know what the Earth's going to look like after the pole ship, the one the military uses, if you Google future maps of America, comma, Chet Snow, not Scallion or some of the other ones, the one that the Navy uses is Chet Snow. Is that on Chet? The Chet Snow map, there's two little islands right up near where we are here. It's your little Jerusalem. That's um, Edgar Casey yes. and Laurie yes. all the way. Well, the there, yeah, I understand. Uh, Sorry, but that's the, the one the military uses. Uh, repeat the name of the website. Which one? That website, Chet Snow. Oh, uh, you uh, have to Google it. Future Maps of America. Future Maps of America, comma. And then do Chet Snow, and that will oh, be the map. Chet, C-H-E-T, Chet Snow. Okay. And that's the one the military uses. There's others. Scallion, there's a whole bunch of different, you know, sidekicks that so have predicted. Snow, yeah. I'm sorry? Nobody knows. I'm going to say, archetypally, in your lifetime. Because, well, I'm not real, and you're hallucinating that bad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.